Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com. Photo, video, digital media production. Today we're discussing If Anything Happens, I Love You. An American animated film written and directed by Michael Gover and Will McCormick. I'm actually not really too familiar with these two individuals, so I'd probably have to do a little bit of research. Um... Will McCormick, American actor, television producer, alongside with writing partner Rashida Jones, was co-writer in 2019's Pixar animated film Toy Story 4. Okay, so that's what that's what his uh, involvement was in the animated world. Its story follows two grieving parents as they struggle after losing their daughter. Um, I don't want to say how they lost their daughter yet. I will say... Right off the top of the uh, of the uh, podcast, I was like, "Wait, what am I doing now?" Oh no! Right off the top of the review, um, I was quote unquote somewhat spoiled because of when you click on the Netflix um, title, it'll give you uh, it'll say you know the Netflix film starting, but then in the top left, it'll say uh, the parental advisories. You know, it says be careful this, that, and the other are going to happen. And they're parental advisories that are somewhat spoilerish to what happened in this uh, short uh, short story. It's only about a 12-minute um, short film. Really, 10 minutes of it is the full story, two minutes of credits, I would say. Um, but it's absolutely beautifully shot in a way that feels, I I guess I say shot, it's animated really. Um, but it's going through the emotions in the most elaborate of ways of showing how two, uh, two parents are going through the process of grieving. Now, when I was watching this, I was actually in the gym. I was just like, all right, I'm going to try to get a little bit short, short form action, um, short story action while I'm jogging. Unfortunately, when I'm jogging, sometimes the, the, uh, the my phone is kind of bouncing on and off the treadmill. So uh, maybe I, I was just, I had to slow down for a little bit and so really take in this uh, short story. So when I was starting to take it in, the first two minutes, right off the bat, I noticed um you know, we have this amazing, uh, very light pianoed music. I'm not really going to talk about spoilers yet, but basically what I'm saying is um, this short story is an amazing watch. I would say this is what Quibi probably should have been um, looking at when they're talking about short films and short story, short animations, this that type of stuff. Um, this felt very much like... Uh, kind of a very mature take on uh, a Disney short that would happen before a Pixar movie. I kind of got that kind of feeling when I watched uh, the Coco short. I forgot what it was called. Um, short and short in front of Coco. What was that called? Oh no, it wasn't it wasn't the uh, Olaf short. No God, no, not that one. Um, there was another one that was, uh, I swear there was another one that, I don't remember, with the Vietnamese, um, um, family, I, I don't know, I'm, now I'm just kind of blabbering on, but anyways, I want to say that this is beautifully, uh, animated, it's kind of, uh, minimalist in a way, the way that they use the colors and the way it kind of feels very much hand drawn even though I, I believe it's all done on computer um it's um very much um thought provoking and makes you just want to go give your family a hug when you see this so um without going into too much spoilers about what actually has happened to this family i will say even though knowing what had happened going in watching it, I was like, this was still extremely effective with the messaging. I would say that it's very heavy handed, but in a way that it's like, all right, they, this is what this is for. They, you know, they could have gone to the point of just saying, 
these are two parents and they are grieving over a child and not been specific about what happened to the child, but they go the extra mile to say this is exactly what happened to the child and the kind of repercussions of uh, them going through it. And so I do kind of have a double-edged sword with um, the music in a way. I loved how minimalist it was at the beginning, kind of not trying to provoke your feelings too much, but obviously it wasn't like a happy time. And then having, uh, you have like the shadows of these parents kind of really expressing how they feel. Um, it is a, it's a fantastic watch, I'll tell you that. And I just was holding my tears back while I was, uh, on the treadmill at the gym the entire time i was like this was a this was a horrible idea this was a horrible idea to watch it here but it was it was still a really beautiful uh animation and so let me see what we have right here for anything else um i okay so from here on we're going to talk about the actual plot and the uh, spoilers of what had happened to this family why it says if anything happens um, I love you. So the film was produced by Gilbert Films and Oh Good Productions. It was released during a private screening at the United Talent Agency in um, uh, Beverly Hills, um, March 4th, 2020, which is kind of crazy. That was like immediately when everything was closing down. So here is the plot. Two parents begin, sorry, two parents begin to grow separated from one another following the death of their teenage daughter though they refuse to speak to one another in person both parents are watched over by their shadows expressing their true emotions while their dad goes outside the mom thinks about entering her old daughter's bedroom though she stops herself due to the overgrowing grief and sadness very much expressed with the uh, shadows while doing laundry, the mom begins to cry after realizing she has washed her daughter's shirt. As she sits near the washing machine, she causes a soccer ball to fall down and open her daughter's bedroom, which also rolls onto a record player, turning it on. As the song 1950, a single recorded by uh, King Princess and uh, released 2018, um, begins to play. The mom decides to enter the room where she later reunites with her husband. While the music begins to play in the background, a shadow representing their daughter pops out of the record player, and the parents begin to remember events in their daughter's life. So this was kind of where I was like, oh my goodness, they are... I thought it was going to be much more of the after effects of them losing their daughter but they were going back and showing you the daughter and showing you the memories and you just instantly feel endeared to this uh this family almost right off the bat in flashbacks the parents see their daughter grow up during the flashbacks um the daughter grows a love for soccer celebrates her 10th birthday and experiences her first kiss um, it, it's, it's so detailed with how it's, uh, okay, so it's, it's kind of hard to say. It's like, they are detailed with the storytelling, but the actual animation's rel relatively simplistic, but it's still in a way that the way they're using colors and, uh, grayscale, the, the way that they're not using color and showing how the daughter brought color into their life and how it can, how they can continue to grow from it is just absolutely uh fantastic it's uh it's a beautiful piece of animation when it comes down to uh showing the progression of someone's life this is this is a 10 minute movie in uh in a quicker form than most movies can do in two hours or something like that you know this is uh very powerful um, and so, yeah, we see the progression of this daughter growing up. It is, uh, it's hard to watch, especially, uh, knowing what's to come. In a final flashback, the daughter leaves her parents to attend school, knowing what's about to happen. Sorry. The daughter leaves her parents to attend school. Next line. Knowing what's about to happen, 
the shadows of the parents attempt to stop her stop her from entering the premise but they fail inside the school the daughter is shot and killed during a school shooting uh, with her final text to her mom being if anything happens i love you now i can absolutely see how this is uh you know an, an emotional wallop for anybody watching this regardless if you have any attachment to this to to this happening in real life obviously if this has happened to you in real life this is going to be extremely difficult to watch and uh you have my utmost sympathy uh I can't even begin to think about the having empathy for somebody that has gone through this. It's just uh, to even fathom having gone through this is just uh, it's it's just conjuring up emotions I can't even uh, express at this moment. But yes, absolutely, you have my uh, utmost sympathy, and seeing the daughter go through the shadows is extremely difficult. Not like I'm in the parents' position uh, yet, maybe one day I'll have my own um, uh, offspring or whatever you call them, your your own uh, baby Yoda or something like that. Um, but yeah, I can only imagine for parents, this is extremely difficult to watch. It's hard from any angle, whether you've gone through this or not, whether you've uh, experienced tragic loss, just not even as detailed as having it through a school shooting but if you've lo lost anybody um and i guess this is kind of specific to uh losing someone that is young but lost anyone that is you know gone before their time and yeah i mean you can relate to this short story even not having gone through to that and it's just like uh extremely powerful um but like I said, they could also have done this story without being as specific as showing the daughter walking in the school and the camera being held from the outside of the cafeteria. They clearly show the uh, American flag, uh, the United States flag, uh, in bright colors just to represent where we are. They, they wanted to be very specific about being in the States, and they were making... Uh, gun violence anti-gun violence uh short film and so it's uh very powerful in a way that i like i said it can be related to even not having gone through something this traumatic um so as the shadows of the parents grow apart the shadow of the daughter brings them together forcing the real parents to see the good memories they were able to experience with their daughter when she was alive. In the present, the parents hug and the daughter's shadow becomes a bright light in between the shadows of her grieving parents. It is a phenomenal piece of uh, animation. And wow, I think this is the way that you need to take notes for, you know, future short films um, to possibly, you know, n not copy, but take the notes of the best things of this, you know, the look, the simplicity, the, the message, all of this, it's all hitting on so many cylinders. I will say a little bit that the, the song did occasionally draw a little bit att too much attention to itself. Cause when the initial song started and the soccer ball hit, the record player i was like oh no i'm starting to feel this turn into a a music video and i was like all right is this going to turn into a anti-gun violence slash music video and i really don't think it did i don't think it became overbearing from the rest of the story that 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 was the only thing that i did notice that i was like i really enjoyed the uh, the music without lyrics um and to have the music kind of just kick in right there and it felt very modern in a way that i was like all right so this is kind of like gearing me into today's time like this felt like it for a while it could have been uh a short film that took place 20 years ago or five 
years in the future. It really felt like timeless in a way. But then the more that they kind of had these uh, small things like the record player is a little bit timeless. Uh, I think they were in the uh, their house a little bit. They showed a couple of the things. Um, washer machine, I guess, kind of puts you in a certain time. But yeah, I, I really did enjoy this um, piece of animation and how they use color when they were showing like the color of uh, where the daughter had messed up the side of the house and she had painted it and took a photo. I was just like, oh God. <laughs> it was just like, fuck. Just like, oh my God. I was just in a big puddle after that uh, on the treadmill and I had to explain to everybody that I was, you know, working my ass off and not crying my ass off. <laughs> so, um, ab you know, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, what I'm seeing is uh, in the notes on here, it says some moviegoers found this similar to be the, similar to the survivors and the victims of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting um, who texted their parents while shooting was uh, happening. Um taking place it, it it's really uh you know something you obviously never want to go through and uh, i think uh it regardless of you know bipartisan i absolutely think nobody wants any of that to happen and they you know want people to be safe want people to be healthy they want they don't want any of this bullshit to be happening so yeah, let me see if anything else. Uh, independent critic Richard Popes gave the short film a grade rating of A+, giving it four out of five stars, praising the film's message, animation, characters, writing, if anything happens, uh, I love you, is a perfect weaving together of artistry and purpose, meaning, and mission. It is an animated masterpiece. Wow, that is saying some high praise. After watching the short, the crew at The Decider recommended viewers to watch the film, with Anna meddling, calling it a short, beautiful, but excruciatingly pain, painful portrait of a tra tragedy. Tragedy. I can't. Tragedy. Tragedy. Oh my gosh. Tragedy. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm getting off of here. I, I've now, now I'm just fucking up everything. <laughs> tragedy. I can't fucking say it. Oh my God. Uh, stating that it was uh, honest and it felt like a true story. All right, yeah. I'm again. I'm not laughing at this. I'm I'm laughing at my own, uh, my own ass. I'm 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 stupid. So, yeah. Uh, let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know what you thought about. If anything happens, I love you. Um, did you like it? Did you did you think it was uh, long enough? Did you did you want to see a full movie like this or is this short? animation the way that we should start looking at how maybe netflix can start capitalizing on their platform because one thing i think that we need to start looking at netflix at doing it possibly innovating uh, a couple things uh integrating some live chat features integrating some more watch party features with being able to watch it with your friends and stuff like that maybe having uh like a camera they uh, eventually you can watch uh, like I just saw uh, Fortnite is introducing this new uh, uh, feature that you can play Fortnite on video and you can see all your friends and everyone can see each other kind of thing. So it would be kind of cool to see if Netflix can kind of capitalize on that. This would have been an interesting watch if you had some friends to watch this with, especially with uh, because of COVID times, people want to watch things together, but they don't exactly want to leave their house. And so this, you know. Maybe not as short a form as this, but, you know, possibly in the future might have some interesting Netflix uh, uh, media streaming. You know, they, they're they always trying to branch out with new different things. But anyways, um, uh, thank you for listening, watching Look at All Podcasts. If you want this podcast early, go to Patreon, go to YouTube, get it mastered on SoundCloud, get it live on Twitch. Um, we are also on Audible now. We're or live on Amazon. So be sure to check out at Look It All Podcast. Best way to support us is through the Patreon and or PayPal. So the links are in the description. And uh, yeah, take it easy.